there, friends of Mona. It's me, Ginny Homan. I am a Nebraska landscape painter, and I get to recreate our gorgeous and ever-changing Nebraska skies every day. And I am going to give you today a tour of my studio, my upcycled studio. Ever since I was a child, I felt compelled to be in nature, and as a young woman, I have felt compelled to preserve the beauty of our prairies and skies through my paintings. So I guess putting my money where my mouth is, so to speak, I created a studio space that is um, upcycled and sustainable. So I'm gonna give you a little peek. It's located here in Kearney, Nebraska in an undisclosed attic location. Come on up. Well, here we are. I have a beautiful but rather tiny attic space. And if you look at my floors, these were, um, were once in a schoolhouse in rural Nebraska. And my ceilings were once a part of a barn. And my lovely chandelier here was found in a dumpster in Manhattan, Kansas, I believe. So I ask or a lot of times I get asked, do I work alone? Do I work with music? Do I have friends over? And usually I'm sort of reclusive and I, it's just me. Sometimes it's a friend, sometimes it's another artist pops in, sometimes it's my three, one of my three daughters or my husband, but always I am working with my boys. This is Mr. Bubbles. Can you say hi? And this is Jacques Cousteau, our, um, our, our famous unicorn explorer poodle. So I guess I'm gonna start with um, having you come over here and I'll show you a few pieces that inspire me in my studio. This guy here was a, um, a gift from my husband, but before it was a gift to me, it was a gift to him from someone that in here in Nebraska that works on a bison preserve. So I adorned it very respectfully with things that I found hiking, little bones, a nest, feathers, um, little teeth, crawdad claws, things that I, um, that were happy things from nature that I found. So when I'm done with it, I will, I, mean, I plan to at some point return it to, um, to the prairie where it came from. So I guess the next thing that I'd like to share with you, hey, hey boys, is my red sofa. I get asked a lot by guests of my studio, what's up with the red sofa? Well, as it turns out, it was a um, acquired by a gentleman who acquired it from a brothel so i do i have a real i have a real live brothel couch and mostly it's used for my um mr bubbles he's he, he wants me off his couch and otherwise i use it to take a peek at my work from a distance so i think it's really important to step back from my pieces sometimes and look at them from far away so i will sit here and contemplate my um my work from afar and at any given time i have probably seven to fifteen larger pieces that i'm working on and right now you can see i have quite a series of um of large squares that i'm getting ready to put together for a show and they're all my palette right now is very soft it's very pastel-y and light and airy i think this is a time where we all need a little a little light and air so when I work, I work over here and I work two pieces at the same time. And when I'm working, I listen to audiobooks. Right now, I'm listening to The Murmur of Bees, a little older book, but it's worth a listen. And then um, I keep all of my pastels over here in these little recycled um, or upcycled bins from Barnwood. So I get to go here when I start a piece and I get to go shopping and pick out my colors and I create a palette for each piece and my palette looks like this 
So I go through and put each pigment that I think I'm going to use in a piece in this box. And this is actually the palette for this piece here, but oddly they have similar palettes so I've been using this one for both. And I would be lying if I told you that this always looks this nice. I tidied it up a little. I always start out like this and then by the end of the day I have chalks all over the floor. I'm stepping on them. My aunt covered in covered in pastel dust, but I, I always wear this apron, which used to be this color. And even after washing it a lot, it has turned out, it was, it was kind of bright blue. This was a gift from my mom and dad when I graduated from college back in 1994. So I love, I love having this guy around. And like my lighting, I can switch this around, move it around and move, I move the easels into different spots like depending on what the light does during the day. But that's sort of sort of how I roll. I paint on um, a panel, a, a masonite panel that's got um, there. So I can I can wipe the pigment off somewhat and I keep working on them till they're till they're finished. So sometimes my dogs will lick a piece like that one over there has some dog water splashed on it, but that's OK. It'll I can fix it. I'm the, I'm the artist, so I can fix it. And I guess before I let you go, it's not a very big space, but before I let you go, I would like to um, just thank you all for, I guess, watching this. And Mona has asked me to give a little, I, I think, some words of wisdom. So before I tell you all goodbye, this is my word of wisdom. I have a quote that I keep in my studio from Theodore Roosevelt that reads, comparison is the thief of joy. And over the course of a year, I look at hundreds, if not thousands of paintings and sculpture from other artists. And this is um, just a little reminder to me to not compare myself to these other artists. I take great inspiration from them. I love being critiqued by other artists. I love their advice and I always have their backs, but I know there's always gonna be a person that is a better artist than I am and I, I don't, I don't want to lose my joy. So thank you so much for coming and I uh, hope to see you soon.